What if I told you the real Colonel Sanders is just as strange as the mascot version you see all over TV? Colonel Harlan Sanders KFC has become a huge part of American culture, and the restaurants have even become a hit internationally. Despite this, not a lot of people even know that Colonel Sanders was a real human being, let alone what he did with his life. That's why we are taking a look at the extremely unique face of Kentucky Fried Chicken and figuring out how he was able to leave such a strong legacy. Make sure to watch until the end, too, since we saved one of our wildest Colonel Sanders facts for last. Harlan David Sanders was born in 1890, and things almost immediately became serious for him and his family. At just six years old, Harlan's father passed, and he was left to take care of his younger brother and sister. Sanders probed around Indiana for work, and would end up taking a variety of jobs there over the years, such as farmer, streetcar conductor, insurance salesman, and even railroad fireman. It was in these wacky and wildly different kinds of jobs that Harlan emerged as a bit of a character. He seemed like the type of person that tried to make ends meet with a smile on his face, even if the work he was doing was unorthodox to say the least. Sanders had dropped out of school in just the seventh grade, but he clearly had a good head on his shoulders and a loud and vibrant personality that people just couldn't get enough of. Even as a young man, he could see how he would eventually become the Colonel Sanders that we still see portrayed on the internet and on TV, since he just carried himself in a very rare way. Despite his success in Indiana across various business pursuits, it didn't take long for Harlan to look for greener pastures elsewhere. With his brother and sister getting older, Harlan decided that it may be time for him to explore his surroundings a bit, which is where he found himself in Kentucky. Part of the charm with Colonel Sanders is that he somehow remains relatable to the average person. This isn't some tactician or great businessman with advanced strategies, but instead just a person trying to make it in life. After moving to Kentucky, Sanders would actually settle upon his first restaurant soon afterwards, but the location came with a catch. Sanders' restaurant was part of a gas station, as it was the only place he could afford at the time. The service station he operated was located in Corbin, Kentucky, and his main source of clientele were the truckers passing by. This was also the year 1930, and Sanders was 40 years old at this point. Nobody thought that he would go on to create the most iconic fried chicken of the 20th century, and even Sanders wasn't making that his focus even now. His service station did not serve fried chicken at the start, since it took too long to prepare. Instead, it was his country ham and steak dinners that kept the lights on for Sanders, and word spread fast about his little restaurant. More and more people started coming to the service station, only to see Sanders and an old family dining room table to eat at while waiting for them. This wasn't the classiest or most refined place to get your food. And then again, that was definitely a part of the point. Sanders was entirely focused on the product, and could care less about how his stand looked. In fact, a lot of people who came in at the time reported that he would join in and make fun of just how strange and cramped the location really was. It wouldn't take long for the colonel to open up a second location, which he chose to place directly across the street from the old gas station location. He named it Sanders Cafe, and finally started serving fried chicken that he prepared in an iron skillet. In 1935, popular food critic Duncan Hines mentioned the restaurant in his road food guide, and even included it as one of the locations to try out. By 1939, the restaurant was once again included in Hines' guide, and Sanders had finally perfected his fried chicken recipe. Sanders would start to use pressure cookers to quick fry the chicken, and coated the chicken in his now famous 11 herbs and spices. This became a huge part of the brand for Sanders, who refused to give out the recipe to anyone, and really created an aura around the chicken at the time. Before we get into Sanders' explosion onto the national scene, please consider leaving a like on the video if you are enjoying it so far, as it helps us out in a big way. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more content like this one, posted all the time. The location that Sanders had picked to build up his restaurant empire was not always the safest area. In fact, it was actually nicknamed Hell's Half Acre because of how dangerous it was. That didn't bother the hot-headed Sanders, though, who never backed down from a challenge. 
When his rival got mad about all the marketing and advertising done for Sanders Cafe, the man began painting over ads across the town with his own service station instead. This angered Sanders, who rolled up with two of his gas station buddies to talk some sense into the man. A literal shootout began though, and one of Sanders' men was killed. Sanders returned fire, shooting the man through his shoulder and disabling him before he could get up to any more trouble. The story spread fast, and Sanders' reputation only continued to grow. Around the same time, Sanders would finally gain his nickname of Colonel. While Sanders did serve in the military, he actually faked his birth records just to serve. It wasn't on the battlefield, but instead in the kitchen that Sanders would get his powerful and iconic nickname. The governor of Kentucky at the time, Ruby LaFoon, issued a ceremonial decree that Harlan Sanders was now a colonel. For most people, this would just be a quirky little event, but Harlan really saw the value in the honor and would go all out to represent himself appropriately. He would dye his mustache and beard white to go along with his hair and would dress in a string tie and white suit to appear more like a colonel. We also found out later in his autobiography that he chose the white apparel because it hid the flower stains he would get when working in the kitchen all day. Things were going relatively well at this stage of his career, and it was clear that the colonel had a passion for making good family-style food. Still though, it didn't seem like much more was going to come from the business, until the year 1952, when the first Kentucky Fried Chicken franchise would open in… Utah? Sanders' friend helped to set up the business in Utah, and that store even designed the now iconic white and red buckets that are still being used in KFCs today. Sanders was 65 by now, and reliant on a $100 social security check to keep him afloat. The colonel had not at all anticipated that this franchise would end up becoming a hit. But once it did, he took his car and toured the country, opening up more and more KFCs and teaching them how to make the perfect fried chicken. People in Utah believed that they were getting more than fast food, and that the fried chicken was authentic southern food. As a result, people flocked to the restaurant, and thought that they were getting a cultural experience as much as an eating one. Each location outside of the South had a similar reaction, and the stores were doing great numbers as a sort of specialty restaurant. For the next 12 years, the colonel would work to grow the business, and trying to find people that he could trust to keep the positive perception of the restaurant going. Sanders knew that it would only take one or two bad eating experiences for people to turn on the restaurant, and so he simplified the recipe slightly and taught it to everyone before he would move on to the next location. In 1962, as Sanders entered the later stage of his life, he would finally sell the business. Sanders seemed content at first, and was happy that the company was in good hands. Seven years later, another deal to buy the company would go through with huge food conglomerate Hoiblein, and this would spark a war that the colonel would have with his own fast food brand. Colonel Sanders could have just let it go. He had already stepped away from the company he had built, and he was focused on other pursuits with his wife at this point in his life. But Sanders couldn't get over the fact that Hoiblein were watering down and butchering his once great formula. Sanders called their gravy slop, and would even go on to call the owners a bunch of booze hounds. The colonel did all of this while still technically being the face of the company, and that only endeared him to fans more. Even with absolutely no skin in the game, the colonel still stood for a good and honest food experience above all else. People supported the colonel, who actually went through the trouble of starting up a rival restaurant just to kick it to KFC. He called the restaurant the Colonel's Ladies' Dinner House, and served essentially the same menu he did at KFC back in the day. In response, Hoiblein threatened to block the plan and prevent Sanders from ever opening up his restaurant to the public. The hot-headed Colonel responded by issuing a massive $122 million lawsuit, which he wasn't bluffing about in the slightest. This scared the current owners of KFC, who settled for $1 million outside of court, but it was never money the Colonel was looking for. Also within that settlement were private cooking lessons that the colonel himself would provide to the Hoiblein executives, and in exchange he promised not to criticize KFC ever again. The product soon improved, and Sanders never spoke poorly of his company again. The restaurant that Sanders opened up with his wife remained open, although the name had to be changed. It's actually still around today even, and goes by the name Claudia Sanders Dinner House if you ever want to try a lesser known KFC style restaurant. Sanders didn't end up going through with his decision to compete against KFC, 
but he definitely got his point across. People love Colonel Sanders because he isn't some random mascot, but instead a real human being whose unique and often silly personality are cranked up for laughs. The real Colonel cared deeply about the service he was providing, and hated the idea that his restaurant would ever disappoint a customer. Even after stepping away, he couldn't help but fight one last time for his fan base, and that's what truly made him the biggest face in chicken for almost a century now. But what do you think of the Colonel's persona? Do you think it's a bit much, or do you think he's just being himself? Let us know what you think in the comments section down below. If you like this video, don't forget to leave a like, and if you like videos like this one, make sure to subscribe for more. Until next time.